We've talked about this for some time, actually having lights integrated into the frame. And on this bike here, it's got an LED light integrated into the frame. I've never seen that before. I always thought it'd be pretty cool if you could get lights on a bike already pre-installed. It's obviously not gonna be a crazy light, super high lumen first seeing for miles on the trails, but this is a B scene light. So if you're riding and the end of the ride, you start getting to the road and it's kind of dark, this is brilliant. And actually you can turn it off and on with the Bosch wireless remote. And if I just bring you just round to the other side of the bike, you can see it's got integrated tail lights just on the rear there. One, one super bright LED on each side. I think that is really cool. Really neat, actually. I would definitely take something like that on one of my bikes. This is probably the most high-tech bike in terms of new stuff that I've seen so far. Brand new ABS, an unreleased Bosch drive unit. Who knows what battery is in there? It's quite a fat down tube. It says prototype on it. The top tube has got a cut out for what looks like it could be for a bigger Bosch unit on there. Maybe there's gonna be some kind of new updated system controller coming soon. I also wonder if this has got a new Bosch motor because it's very, very covered just under there. And this has got some really interesting tech on it. It's got Magura's new Gustav brakes on it, but this is connected to Bosch's ABS. So check this out. This has got a massive master cylinder. So if you check this out just down here, look how the disc rotor is mounted to the wheel. That is crazy. I've never seen anything like that before. And if we follow it back up, we can see the Bosch ABS unit just attached to this fork. This is a Lytro fork. And the fork, I don't know who actually makes this fork. I've got to be honest with you. I've never seen that before. Lytro, maybe a new brand. Lytro SL Supreme. Interesting, it's got the Bosch ABS unit on there. It's running SRAM's new uh, OEM only transmission derailleur, and this is connected with a wire, which you may find quite curious, but this takes its power from the main battery. So instead of having one of these little batteries that you have to charge, this allows it to connect to the main battery via the motor. So you never have to worry about charging the axis battery, it's only a small thing. And then check out the rear, if I just bring you around here, we've got the big chunky Gustav Magura uh, caliper, and then that crazy brake mounting system just down there where the rotor is like directly attached to the hub. That's really cool, super interesting design there. If we just squeeze around the other side, the motor has got tape on it as well. So this is definitely a unreleased Bosch system here. This is a new motor on here. It's, it's taped up. I won't take it off because they've tried to conceal it, but this is perhaps a Bosch Gen 5. So that can only mean we're really close to a new Bosch drive unit come out. Hopefully we'll see that really soon. This new bike from Raymond called the Tarak Ultra has ZF's brand new, super compact, but really powerful drive system. Look how small that is, not much bigger than a can of Coke. It's 90 Newton meters of torque and 600 watts of peak power from something so small. Drive units have gotten much smaller, way more compact, and the design of the motor has allowed them to make it really compact and a really small design, but still output 90 Newton meters of torque. I've had a test ride, I've done a video on this motor system. It's super punchy, real low down, but it's great to see it in this Raymond bike with a 750 battery, 170 mil fork, 160 mil of rear wheel travel, a mullet build, carbon wheels, and they actually do this bike in a lighter weight version, same motor with a 500 battery, there's just over 20 kilos. I think the future of lower powered e-bikes is gonna really shrink because you can get full power bikes in lightweight builds with these compact motor systems. I think that's a real game changer. No longer do you need to choose between having all the power or a lighter weight bike because Raymond's lightweight version of this, it still has 600 watts, 90 Newton meters of torque and a bike that weighs just over 20 kilos. This is 
more than 20 kilos because we've got 750 battery and a Burlier build with a 38 and a Fox X2. So this one weighs about 23 kilos, but it's a nice looking bike from Raymond. Great to see they've made a decent bang up to date enduro spec e-bike for 2025. So Orbea recently released their Carbon Rise, the lightweight trail bike with the full 85 Newton meters of torque from the Shimano EP801 motor. Now this is almost visually the same, but it's aluminium. And it's really unique because mostly aluminium bikes come with chunky welds that you can see, but this hydro bike has super smooth, seamless aluminium welds that have been really finely I think maybe sanded down to get this super smooth look. So this is a brand new bike that's just been released from Orbea, the aluminium rise. So we've got the full power or the full torque from this Shimano EP801 RS motor. So it's a, it's a build that is not the lightest because it's in aluminium, but if you're curious about the weight, uh, the frame of the carbon rise is 2.2 kilos. This weighs 1.2 kilos more in aluminium. So that gives you an idea of the difference between an aluminium frame bike and a carbon bike. There's a few parts I've not actually seen before. This Fox fork, I've never seen this. This must be a model year 25 or an unreleased uh, fork out here. But we've got a 160 fork out the front and the rear's got 150 mil of travel. It's uh, kind of like a, an aggressive trail bike, I would say. I love these little features that Orbea add in, just really handy, really useful. Allen keys that you can just pop into the linkage just here. This is a neat bike. I like this colorway, it really stands out. It actually looks just like a carbon bike. So a more attractive price point from Orbea on this aluminum rise. I think it looks great in this colorway. Frame shape's nice, lines on it are really nice. Good geo, looks really clean. Minimalist kind of bottom bracket area. Got full 85 Newton meters of torque, internal battery, which um, there's a couple of options, uh, but this one's got a 600 watt hour battery and it's super light. Or they have got a real high energy density cell capacity in there and they've done a really good design on that. So I'm with Maxi from Intend. Recently, uh, you've got your fork and now you can adjust the travel on it, which is pretty cool. So you can take it from 160 to 190 just with a shock bump. And, exactly, and you attach the shock bump and you rotate the stanchion and you have a range of 30 millimeters depending on which air spring you have. So it's like 160 to 190 or 150 to 180 or 140 to 170. Yeah, that's really cool. Really quick as well. Yes. But I just saw you've got a new fork over here. So we've got the, um, the Compotec C-Duro frame from the Czech Republic. And uh, they obviously have a really fancy carbon technology thing going on. So we have, um, so with them together, we developed um, the, this fork, which has carbon upper legs. So it essentially saves a ton of weight and it's stiffer than our heaviest um, single crown fork. So, so this, this is all carbon? This, this is this all carbon, yes. Oh, okay. It has a little, little tiny aluminum solution thing for the, for the connection here, but essentially it's full carbon tube, yes. Wow, okay. And how much weight does that save? Because is this the intent, is this the flash? Well, it's, it's kind or of it? in between everything. So the, um, the, uh, the stiffness is basically, it's stiffer than our heavy duty flash fork, which is at 2,300 2, grams. Yeah. But this one is at 2,000 grams, so we are two kilos. Okay. Saves us uh, 300 grams of weight on there. That's pretty significant. Yes. And is. this is your classic upside down fork? Single what? crown upside down fork, yes. What would you say for anybody that hasn't experienced an upside down fork, what the main benefits might be compared to a standard single right crown fork? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, you have the, uh, the lubrication of the bushings, right? Yeah, so, yeah. since it's upside down, the lubrication, it will always um, be in the bushing. So, you have really smooth and free feel of the fork. Then you have the whole side load force against, like, distance to the bushing. So, while you're going in the travel, you actually have the, uh, um, the lever force to the bushings uh, yeah. decreases. So, it moves freely while you're going through the travel and it's really easy to service you just you know you don't have the whole csu unit when you have when you want to do service or anything you can just do one side after the after another this is a um 
Well, semi-open bath cartridge. So open bath would be, of course, no seals and lubrication equals damping oil. And this is semi-open bath, so we are close here. We have um, regular rebound um, and compression piston. There's high-speed compression, high-speed rebound, also low-speed adjusters. And yeah, it's our damper. It's cool to see with a see-through, right? It's really cool yeah. to see. I think one of the things that you guys are really famous for is your new Trinity brake system. Yes. <laughs> and I know it sells out every time you release a batch in, in like five minutes. And I can't it's think like of- It's like more like one to two minutes. <laughs> one to two minutes. I can't think of any other part that has this amount of height on it yeah. compared to your brake system. Now, what makes this special? What makes it unique? And is that why you're selling them so fast as well? People ask me personally, I would say the nicest thing about them is A, they're really powerful. So they're, they're definitely uh, gravity oriented. Um, you can go to the bike park, you can do enduro riding, but they're not super heavy or anything, so you can put them on a trail bike as well. Um, the bleeding is really, really easy. You have like a bleed lock bolt, so you can essentially um, bleed the whole system and you don't have any drop of oil. Nice. Yeah. And I just noticed something that looks maybe new over here. What, what have we got going on here? This looks pretty cool. So um, this is going to be our uh, basically trail version of the Trinity, Trinity Trail or whatever, we're not clear about the name yet. Um, it's essentially a smaller mass caliper, has the same um, brake pads, same pistons. There's going to be a, a magnets in the pistons, so you don't need the spring and you don't need the splint, so you can just put the brake pads in and they snap into place. Yeah, essentially the whole caliper, since it has less mass, has a little bit of a softer modulation to it and it's more lightweight. I mean. Trinity is not heavy to begin with, but it's um, uh, even more lighter, yes. I know why people really want this brake, because they just feel amazing. Yeah. The lever, the blade position. Yeah, so we've got the four bearings in there. It's really um, light. Uh, yeah, it activates really lightly and um, yeah. feels great. Amazing. Nice one. Well, thanks very much for your time. Thanks You're for welcome. sharing and good luck over the next couple of months. And hopefully we'll see more of these sets available because I know the demand is... Yes, we are, we are working on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Cheers, yep. dude. Cheers. Thanks, Maxi. Yep. I was just checking out this bike over here with the Intend Carbonite fork on. And this gentleman here mentioned that this is, this is actually his bike frame. And I thought it was aluminium. But then you mentioned, no, it's, it's carbon fiber. So explain, explain the features and the technology that you're using here. Yeah, this uh, carbon fiber frame is built using our appropriate uh, technology called integrated uh, loop connection, you know, where the connection of the tubes are made uh, integrally in a robot uh, assisted process, so fully industrial automated process. And uh, yeah, it's very stiff. We use only high modulus fiber and very cost effective because it's all uh, machine made uh, structure. Of course, we are a uh, Compotech industrial company making mostly industrial parts and this is sort of spin-off of our industry. Hobby. Hobby, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. So it's carbon fiber, but there's no hand layup. It's, it's no, via a robot. No. Okay. And and how is it doing that? How, you mentioned that it, it, it's kind of like a winded carbon fiber, yes, is yes. that right? Yes, we start with uh, carbon fiber tubes, filament yeah. tubes, then we put uh, the ends, you know, and then we go back to the machine and then the fibers are integrally wound around in longitudinal axial direction and some hooks fiber to consolidate and that's it. And then this connection is high strength for bending. Bending is one side is tension, one side is compression and you can't break fibers in tension. Nice. And is there any plans to build one with a motor on it so I can try it? Specifically for you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thanks so much. And it's great to see you guys here on, on the stand with yeah. Intent. So Thank you very nice much. To meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you. our whole fast trail tool wrap so it's a two-part system wraps onto your frame and stays locked on there's no movement and then you've got your wrap that you can keep all your tools nice inside it you've got a waterproof pocket you can carry your inflators your pluggers multi-tools and everything's there and it hangs nicely off your bike so stuff's not being sat in the dirt when you're doing any work on it so you've got your puncture pluggers single-sided hook for 
basically ease of pulling the worms off and putting them into the tire they're not pulling back out all kind of folds back into itself you can just have it as like a little plug splits off so you can then put it back inside itself you can store your plugs inside with it and then your sealant you've updated that quite recently to a new formula yeah i want to say about 18 months ago yeah. so we updated it to just make it a little bit more of a mobile product it's still got the um, platelets in but we've also now put cellulose fibers into it so everything's bio it just helps create a seal faster stronger and um, yeah seals up six mil holes it's water-based as well so it lasts a lot longer microfiber cloths if i'm not well, mistaken it's not these... microfiber yeah they're not tell me no. about that so we actually went with bamboo um so it's more absorbent than microfiber but also if you want to clean them you're not getting the microplastics back into the water supply um so it's a no-brainer it's more absorbent and better for the environment it's bamboo and they're 100 percent recyclable whereas yep. I, I didn't know microfiber is not no is it? it's so, it every time you wash it and clean it it gets worse i want to say like this has really caught my eye and mm. probably quite a big product for you because you're now bringing out well you've got a range of grips out and yes. those are colors like the valves and I think you've got a couple of different styles like a mushroom type grip and then a knurled grip but yeah did you just buy these off the shelf or have you designed them like tell me a bit no about these them. have taken us a couple of years to develop um so the monarch grip you know we want to keep something to do with royalty being this is Steve um so we do two types you do a knurl and a mushroom um, within the two types you've got two thicknesses so we do a thin one that's tapered from a 30 to a 32 mil and the thick one tapers from 32 to 34 mil the undersides they've all got the finger bars that's cut in so they're recessed instead of sticking out like a waffle does you've got a finger oh sorry a thumb pad just to keep everything nice from there so they're a nice soft 20a compound like 20a like a 20a okay. yeah it's the some rubber sticky. I can feel it's sticky here. They're yeah. tacky, they're comfortable. Um, yeah, and they come in the five colours that we do. So red, mango, turquoise, slate and black. And then we have 12 different colours of lock rings so you can pimp them up to your heart's content. This is Marin's first Bosch powered bike. I was a big fan of the Alpine Trail and the Rift Zone that was Shimano based bikes, but this is their first Bosch based bike and it's a long travel enduro built. It's got 160 on the rear. It's an enduro spec. It's got a slack 63 degree head angle, but there's a flip chip and you just can turn around the headset and that will steepen or slacken the head angle by 0.75 degrees. It's got a 170 mil fork, 160 mil of rear wheel travel. They've placed the battery really low in the frame. And what that does is it creates a really low center of gravity. The bike can be maneuvered and feel very, very stable because the weight's centered. The Bosch motor has been rotated upwards to allow that battery to be really low and the battery can be removed just under there. Got a coil shock out the rear. It's a mullet bike and personal preference. I really enjoy riding mullet bikes. You can get off the back. Even as a tall guy, I do find I'm 29 as I do get contact with my butt on long travel bikes on the steep stuff. So I love to see they got a 20, 7.5 out the rear. What's cool to see on this bike is they've got a flip chip on the rear. And what you can do is you can lengthen or shorten the chainstay by five mil. So uh, I think proportional geometry is a big thing, especially on the bigger bikes. If you want to make the bike feel more centered and more balanced on this, you can flip it into the longer position and extend the rear chainstay. Nice neat integration with a Bosch top tube system controller and the wireless remote on here and i really like marin's uh, own house brand components their grips are really nice i remember those from the last bike that i rode and the bars just look really premium this one's running trp brakes and v tires so there you go marin's new alpine trail e-bike bosch based enduro bike aluminium build looks like an absolute ripper 